I'm Mark Goldberger at the UN and Global Affairs blog, UN Dispatch. I'm Matthew Bishop, uh, New York Bureau Chief of The Economist and co-author of Philanthropy Capitalism, How Giving Can Save the World. So now that we've come to the end of the week talking about the MDGs, looking back, what important lessons do you think have been you know, brought up or learnt? Uh, well, I, I think you know the, the, the main, from at least from an American <laughs> government perspective, the main lesson has been that you know we can restructure the way that our government operates to elevate the importance of development uh, in our foreign policy, and that was you know, the big right? announcement that the Obama administration that the Obama administration made this week, and and you know we'll see if that's actually implemented, but it was useful to have this meeting to to, to have this announcement sort of take place. Yeah, I think that's right. Everyone is now talking from the same page, and I think it's the right page. It's the, a strategy for uh, addressing the problems of poverty through you know, a development policy that does bring the, bri the, the, the private sector and job creation and actually making economies self-sustainable. Um, you know, and I think that is the right agenda to have. The question I'm still left with is whether there's enough commitment to doing what needs to be done quickly enough and whether the resources are really there. But I think at least the world has now got onto the right agenda and uh, is, is seeming to set out a strategy and certainly this commitment from the Obama administration I think will affect how aid and development policies are viewed in other countries as well. And a lot of people have been speaking about the fact that MDGs, the term itself, is like not many people will know what you're talking about if you go and speak to your average person outside. Do you think this event, this week, has improved that or you know, is, is it still the same? I, mean, I think it isn't a very catchy phrase, but I think um, you know, the fact that people are out there talking about what progress is being made and where progress isn't being made and the fact they're grounding it in very specific examples like you know, progress on malaria or progress on uh, poverty reduction and so forth, hunger, all those different issues, you know, I think has, has increased awareness out there. And I think the thing is to, to keep the public's attention on what's going on beyond this week and over the years ahead. Yeah, I, I think that's right. You know, when, when you mention the term MDG to, to people, you know, to your everyday person, you know, eyes tend to glaze over a bit. But when you uh, tell them about the need to bring clean w drinking water to people or to fight malaria, you know, these are a bit, you know, almost sexier issues that are, you know, th that individuals are able to relate to on, on more of a personal level, especially I think the drinking water issue, because everyone around the world knows what it's like to be thirsty. But no, you know, and, and, and so it's, it's you know, it's just a matter of, of, of making those, I think, personal connections. And, you know, unfortunately, the term MDGs is, is somewhat abstract. <laughs> but frankly, it's, it's, you know, it was, it's a useful sort of phrase for policymakers because it, it does encapsulate a nice set of eight goals and targets that, you know, everyone agreed on. So it's useful to that extent. I know you both touched on this in what you were saying, but what's the biggest thing that you think has been learned now at the end of this week? Like, what concrete things can we say now this summit happened and now this is going to happen. Uh, you know, on, on Wednesday there was a big meeting on maternal women and, and children's health and that meeting culminated in a 40, in 40 billion dollars worth of commitments. These commitments were both financial but they're also policy commitments. So for example the government of Liberia promised to increase the percentage of its national budget that it spends on health from something like 6% to 10%. The government of Yemen promised to enforce a decree that it issued earlier that to bring a, a contraception to all women of, of childbearing age. So there is a sort of very concrete policy commitments that have been made and it's just, you know, again, it's just a matter of, of following through, making sure, you know, holding these governments accountable to those policy commitments and also holding donor governments accountable to their financial commitments that they made. And, you know, I think that what's, what President Clinton said yesterday at his event was, you know, that the public need to be reminded that we're not giving anything like as much as they think we are, um, so that they don't say we should be cutting this, but that we should be giving more money towards addressing these problems. And secondly, I think as Bill Gates pointed out, to point to where we are making progress. And there is a lot of good news out there, particularly on the global health and the fact that Gates says we are going to hit the MDG target for lifting people out of poverty, which is you know, pretty remarkable. People wouldn't have said five years ago that we would be making, be able to make that confident prediction. So 
the more we can emphasize that, that this money is not just going into some Swiss bank account for some crackpot dictator in, in, in some country we've never heard of, but is actually helping real people live better lives, um, you know, I think the more likely there is to be momentum to do what needs to be done. And um, President Barack Obama announced that Americans need to, America's going to change the way they do business. What, what kind of changes do you think we need to make from now on? You know, the, the, the changes he was, he was describing are actually very you know, specific policy statements. You know, it, it was a policy statement. Um, essentially, what the president pledged to do is elevate just the concept of development to the same sort of level of foreign policy importance as diplomacy and defense. Traditionally, development has been sort of a second-tier issue. What was significant about President Obama's statement was that it's, it's been lifted up to be on the same tier as, as defense and, and as diplomacy. It's the three Ds, and the third D, development, has now finally been elevated to its rightful place. I talked to Raj Shah, the head of USAID, about one concrete example that he could come up with as to what this new policy would, would mean. And he said, well, one thing that has been very bad in the past has been procurement policy by USAID, how it you know, gets the stuff it, it's sending out there, and the fact it's such a bureaucratic process that basically only big American companies can typically qualify to do this work, and that if they can change the policies they're intending to do, it, it should make it possible for small and medium enterprises and actually local enterprises in the countries that we're trying to help actually get some of this uh, procurement money, which is you know, going to in itself be a direct um, force for kind of development rather than aid and, and you know, actually getting local economies moving on their own.